Sometimes, um, if you give us a diagnosis to do, we'll send you back a sheet showing you where you should put these cleats. Generally, we allow the case to straighten almost completely before we do that. But a case like this, looking occlusally on the four lower incisors, this tooth really should be rotated in this direction and this direction. So we would put a cleat right there and we'd put another cleat right there. When we put that cleat on, it's along the long axis of the tooth. And uh, if we wanted to put a cleat here, we would put it along the long axis of that tooth. So we're gonna, we're gonna put a cleat in this model for you. But first, before we do that, I will show you another. Sometimes we put cleats on where two centrals are lingual to where they belong. And we might want to move these teeth labially. So we might put two cleats here and another two cleats here so that we move these teeth labially. And again, we would put them lengthwise to the tooth. On Asian teeth, for example, with shovel-shaped incisors, you must be very careful to put that cleat right along the marginal ridge on the lingual of the central incisors. Anyway, if we were to uh, put cleats onto this patient, we would put the appliance in the mouth first. And then if we want to put a cleat, for example, on the central incisor, we would mark with a ballpoint pen where we want to put that cleat. And then we would take and grab the cleat with a, with a serrated plier that you can easily afford to burn up. So we're going to put a labial cleat on this case. And we're going to grab the cleat at the edge, if you see there. And we're going to heat that cleat up. And we use a a little burner with a sharp blue flame. And we're gonna heat that. Take the appliance out and we lay it down like this. And we're gonna heat this cleat up red hot. And then I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna push that right in where that little black line was. And when we feel on the labial, that has not gone through that plastic, but it puts a little pressure onto that tooth on the labial surface of the distal point of the central incisor. That's going to move that tooth lingually just slightly. And that's enough to rotate that tooth. Now, if we wanted to put another cleat lingually, we might mark the same tooth at this spot. But now we're going to put it on the lingual surface. So we're going to put that cleat right there on that appliance. So we take a lingual cleat, which has longer legs on it, and we're gonna again hold that cleat on the edge, just like that. And we're gonna heat it again with our burner in a sharp blue flame. Heat it red hot. Once it gets red hot, we're gonna simply Push that right into the lingual, like that, and you can see now the tooth is on the lingual and that's going to shove the mesial surface of the central labially. And so these cleats are frequently used in almost, oh I would say at least 50% of the cases. Now an, again another wire that we might use is called a labial lingual wire. And this wire is used to move teeth. For example, if we wanted to move this tooth to the center or close a diastema, we might want to put a wire um, about a millimeter short of the distal surface of this tooth. And so we again grab this wire, but now we grab it with what we call a 139 plier. It's, it's another orthodontic plier, very handy plier, and we put the appliance in the mouth And now we want to move this tooth mesially. So we want to put that wire about a millimeter short of the distal surface. 
and we put the appliance in the mouth and we push this wire through until it touches that tooth. Then we pull it out and we're gonna push this wire as gingerly as possible. And then we take that wire and we move it and push it through the lingual of this appliance. And now we take the rounded end of the supplier and we're gonna make like a little hook. And then we're gonna pull this back into the appliance. Now we can hardly feel that wire on the lingual. And then we're gonna snip it off, leaving about two millimeters, labially. And we take our rounded part of this 139 plier again, and we turn that wire in, into the appliance. Now that wire goes from labial to lingual, and it's gonna move that lateral mesially. And when we put it in the mouth, that's gonna fit gingerly around that tooth, and it puts pressure on that tooth to move it mesially. Now we might put another wire on this side as a balancing wire, or if we want both teeth to move mesially, we might put two wires equally one millimeter short of the distal surface. And if we have a large diastema to close, we might change this wire once or twice. To change the wire, we simply snip this wire and pull it out. And we pull it out of the lingual. Now we might put the wire in a millimeter more mesial to move the teeth a little further forward. So we take our wire again and we do the same thing. Now we move the wire a little bit further and we put the wire a little closer to the mesial. And we do the same thing again. And we push it through the lingual again and do the same thing with a new wire. And we can do that again here and show you how that's done. We simply turn the wire around on the lingual, pull it into the appliance, snip it off, and you have the wire again. And maybe you want to put two or three wires like that, and you can move teeth mesial distally, you can move bicuspids distally, you can keep room for a canine by providing wires on either side of it. So this is a very handy wire to use. This is a 20 thousandths or one half millimeter diameter steel wire. We don't heat treat them, we put them in just as they are and they very rarely break. The child has to be very careful when they put it in that they don't bite down on that wire. So they wanna stretch the wires as they put them in and then they'll maintain the, the force on that wire. If we wanna trim the appliance, we use a carbide acrylic burr, flame-shaped burr like this. And this is very good for trimming the appliance. If we wanna drill breathing holes in the appliance, we use a single fluted or a triangular um, uh, Fisher burr this one happens to come from Brassler Company, and it is number uh, N219023, but it's very good. It's a clogless burr, and we can drill breathing holes in a child's appliance. If they have trouble uh, with asthma in the summertime or hay fever, they can wear an appliance like this with breathing holes at night, and then they can wear a regular one during the day if they need to.